the 22nd anniversary of the unspooling, yeah. I think is the proper word, in theaters near you, of Pootie Tang. And um, I'm speaking to one of the stars, I'll say it, mm -hmm. of Pootie Tang and you, Bob Costas. Uh, yeah. Well, how, did, how did you get involved <laughs> in, in Pootie <laughs> Tang, Bob? How did that happen? Well, well, knowing of my extensive filmography, which even at that time in the early 2000s included the near Oscar nominated basketball <laughs> alongside Al Michaels uh, and an appearance in a scene with Jason Robards and Glenn Close in the paper. Oh, leave aside the fact that it was me standing at a urinal when Glenn <laughs> mistakenly walked into the men's room at Radio City. It's a very long story, but Ron Howard called me literally the day before. He said, are you in New York? I said, yeah. Mm -hmm. He said, do you have a tuxedo? I said, as it happens, I was at a banquet last night. I do have a tuxedo. Put it on and come over to Radio City tomorrow at 3 o'clock. So that's how that happened. Now, regarding Pootie Tang, Chris Rock calls me. It's Chris Rock. So, of course, I say yes. Mm -hmm. The title was... Uh, a little uh, interesting, especially in 2001 or two, but hey, it's Chris Rock. Um, and so as it turned out, it was very loosely, um, very loosely scripted. Uh, I sat with Pootie on the set of my then HBO show, yes, uh, and it framed the whole movie, the beginning scene and the end scene. And there wasn't really a script. There were just a couple to get to these things. And we had lived almost all of it. And got all of it in two takes. So that's, two scenes. I in was two gonna, takes. And in forty in forty five minutes we were done. I was gonna ask how many takes it took for for these scenes to be one completed. Each. Okay. One each. <laughs> so Chris Rock, had you ever after all, when when you have perfection, even Scorsese would just say cut. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I did Chris get your number? Were you friendly with him? Or did you just answer yeah. your phone? And let's, just... let's put it this way. Yeah. Chris Rock can get anybody's number. That's but true. Yes. I, I, had, I had interviewed Chris Rock before that. We had interacted uh, occasionally. And if you want a parenthetical aside, since you seem to be kind of in a loose mode here. Yes, sir. There are people who can get anybody's number. The morning after Barry Bonds hit 756 to pass Hank Aaron, I was on the Today Show to talk about it. Yes. And Bill Roden, the New York Times, was taking kind of a pro Barry Bonds position, like, there's nothing to see here. He's just the greatest home run hitter. And I countered that using logic and evidence. Okay. <laughs> now, now I'm back at my apartment just a few minutes later. It's now maybe 8 o'clock in the morning Eastern time. And the phone rings. I say, hello. And the woman on the other end says, Mr. Costas, I say, yes. Please hold on for President George H.W. Bush. Oh, wow. And on comes the unmistakable voice of the 41st president. But I'm thinking it's just Dana Carvey pranking me. <laughs> <laughs> and it takes, it takes quite a while for this to sink in that it's really him. And I wish I could do an impression even half as good as sure. Carvey's. But he's telling me how much he approves of what I said about Bonds and Aaron. And then, just to make small talk, George H.W. Bush then says, you know, Bob, I'm just sick about what they did to our pal Ted Williams. They froze his ass down there with some cryogenics in Arizona. I'm just sick about it, Bob. <laughs> when a former president says that, it's just, I'm trying not to laugh. And I'm just, yes, Mr. President, I, I share your concern. <laughs> Hey, what else can you say? Oh, my God. Oh, that is so funny. Uh, so that's fun. So you get a, a cold call from Chris Rock and George H.W. Bush. I mean, that's you, Bob. Right. That's, that's the, Not you... on the same day, but Rock, Rock invites me to take part in this movie. I, I don't hesitate for a second. Sure, what the heck? Oh, my gosh. And now it's kind of a cult classic. It is. You're not wrong. 22, 22 years later. So you said it was loosely yeah. um, delivered, right? Um, mm -hmm. So what is your your ad lib from Pootie Tang, Bob Costas, that you are most proud of? Actually, now that I think of it, there were three scenes. Mm -hmm. Two with Lance Crowther, Crowther mm -hmm. who was Pootie Tang, mm -hmm. and then one in the middle with the great Wanda Sykes, ah, who yes. played Biggie Shorty in the film. Um <laughs> I don't know what was what was my best 
ad lib. Hmm. Uh, I ad libbed a, a series of of background credits that Pootie Tang had, <laughs> and I believe I included crocheting and pottery among them. <laughs> To show what a well-rounded individual he oh, was. Oh my God! Uh, and, and then at one point he started speaking pooty speak, mm-hmm. and and I had to correct him. Uh, <laughs> that that, he, that uh, I at that point by the end of the film understood pooty speak apparently better than he did. <laughs> but none none of it was scripted. Oh, now it doesn't happen nearly as often as it used to. But in the first few years after the release of the film, I could be like in the jetway getting on a plane. Or sitting in a diner someplace, and someone might say, Bob, what a tay, my brother, what a tay. <laughs> and I would just have to respond, yes, my man, going to sign your pity on the runny kind. That is a j- <laughs> it just, it sticks with you. It sticks with you. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free. 